How's it going everyone? It's Kevin from Balls to You and this is going to be a quick and well, I hope it's going to be quick um, advisory video on what size uh, or when should I you know upsize my ball python from its 9 litre tub which is here to a bigger tub okay uh, it's a very difficult question to answer um, but I'll do my best okay um, I had an email from someone asking me you know what do I advise to keep snakes in? Uh, because there's there's this d debate that they should be kept in glass tanks and as opposed to uh, tubs or rubs, which is R U B, really useful boxes. Okay, um, and the reason, you, you know, what, what are the reasons for it? You know, well, it's plain and simple, guys. Glass tanks are for fish. Okay, you can't get no simple than that. Back in the day, you know, back before, you know, in the late 80s, sort of early 90s, probably you were probably advised by most shopkeepers to keep your pet snake in a glass tank. Guys, glass tanks are for, you know, fish, you know, anything like aquatics, anything like that. It's not for reptiles, guys. Uh, and I may be... Um, you know, corrected, but we're talking ball pythons, okay? So, glass tanks like this one, as you'll see on the screen, okay, isn't for your ball python. What you can use is a vivarium, which is like this, okay, which is normally a glass fronted uh, wooden um, sort of vivarium so it has wood around all three sides and then obviously top and bottom it has a glass slide in front them are you know what I would deem as acceptable if you're going to have this you know your ball python as a pet okay and there is a difference keeping a ball python as a pet and keeping it as a breeder uh, you know there's two different ways you can go so <clears throat> For this video, for this purpose, I'm going to concentrate more on you keeping your ball python as a pet, as opposed to um, a you know breeding animal that you're working with in, in your hobby. Um, which there are differences, not much, but there are differences. Don't get me wrong, guys. All my ball pythons I treat as pets. I love them all to death. The majority of them have got names, but again some people just purely want to buy a nice looking snake as a pet and other people want to buy a snake because they have future plans because they would like to make like a blue eyed lucy so they may want a mojave and a lesser and grow them up treat them as pets and then breed them together one day okay so back to the video okay this is a nine litre really useful tub or rub as we call them in the uk or in europe um, <clears throat> basic setup I'll just take our little man out basic setup is you have a water dish again guys this is demonstration purposes just to show you you know and, and setting bits and pieces up and you have a hide now obviously your sort of this end of the tub would be uh, sitting on top of the heat mat okay um, but what I wanted to do and show you with this is if this is a pet okay and you're gonna keep it and you've got a lid on it okay like so um, that's quite transparent okay you can see the snake and it's all good the problem can be sometimes is that the snake doesn't want to be seen so that can pose a bit of a problem uh, you can put them off the food, um, and it, they just don't feel safe enough. Uh, and the reason why we use plastic tubs is because a they're easy to clean, um, they don't hold any hidden germs, um, especially when you clean them really well. And obviously, they they are you know they're they're better than glass tanks at holding heat and humidity. So. <clears throat> Again, guys, this is just for demonstration purposes. So, inside we have a hide and a water dish. And as substrate, as I always say to people, I use paper towel or um, um, 
unprinted paper as my substrate. The reason being is because if ever there was a problem with the snake, i.e. if the snake got mites um, due to the fact that you'd been to a pet shop that had mites and you didn't realise and you came home and you went into your snake room or into your pet snake to get it out and you've got mites on you, you're obviously going to transfer them mites onto your snake. Now, uh, on substrate, you're not like aspen or coconut mulch or anything like that or any fibrous bedding, you're not going to see that. You may see them getting in the water bowl and drowning them, so you may find the mites in there. Um, but ultimately, if you've got substrate, you're not really going to find it. So, for that reason, guys, I stick only to kitchen uh, towel or unprinted newspaper. Okay? So, I'm trying to cover everything, so forgive me if I'm teaching you guys to suck eggs, but um, I'm trying to do my best to cover everything that some people may ask. Okay. You may look at this setup and think, well, that hide's way too big for this, uh, and that water bowl is way too small. Okay. Remember, this is about making the animal feel safe. It's all about the snake, not us, the snake. Um, I'm going to take you back to um, back in the day when we started keeping wild and exotic animals uh, in zoos and stuff like that. Um, if you think back and you you sort of hear on the news that you know so and so zoo down the road has just produced the first rhino bred in captivity, or the giraffe, or a lion, or a tiger, or um, that's because breeding animals in captivity is very hard simply because we don't really know the conditions or the best conditions to keep the animals for them to thrive and, and breed. Um, I'm not saying that zoos don't know what they're doing, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is it's very difficult and to breed a lot of exotic animals in captivity because they're not kept at the optimal conditions. So in a roundabout way, what I'm trying to say is breeding bull pythons is a hell of a lot easier nowadays because we have learned the best way to keep and make our animals happy, safe and secure. So, as I say, a happy snake is a feeding snake. Um, don't get me wrong, again, this is just how I do things and it works I, and I, I, I stress that in everything that I do everything that I show you guys is all a guideline I'm not saying to do it this is just my advice because it works for me right back to it the hide you may look at and think well that's that's a pretty big hide you know there's not much room over here for the snake the water bowl's not very big well, the water bowl is changeable if you want. You can have it deeper, okay? So that's not a problem. Okay, this tub is see-through, as we've said before. This hide looks big and it covers up three quarters of the tub. Is that a problem? Well, not really, because the hot end is over this hide, over this side of the hide, and the, the cool end is sort of it's going cooler up towards this end, okay? The snake's still got plenty of room here, to come out the hide and go around here to the water bowl it can also if it gets too warm inside there it can go on top so not only now have we gave it a nice warm dark place to hide if it really wants to it can come on top and explore on top okay so just because that hide looks big doesn't mean it's a negative you know it's a bad thing okay again guys whatever size hide you have it's how you want it to be and when I say that is it hasn't got to be this big it can be a little bit smaller you know so if you feel like you want to give your snake a bit more room over this side then you can have a half size but again guys as I say it's all about the snake it's about making the snake feel safe happy and secure okay this boy here NGGHI um, he is about 580 grams. 
he still lives in a 9 litre tub as you can see the size comparison it doesn't look like it's very fair for the snake to be living in such a small tub that's not because I'm nasty or I'm horrible this guy I've tried him in an 18 litre I've also tried him in a 33 litre and he just goes off his food he's not happy at all okay he loves the 9 litre size because he feels safer and secure in this 9 litre tub okay this is the size of tub he loves so if he's happy I'm happy if he's feeding I'm, I'm, I'm happy so as long as he's feeding and he's happy I'm happy okay it's not about us it's about the, the health and the welfare and the the snake through and through okay so he can now coil up on the he can go inside the hide and he can go on the hot end he can come over to this side of the hide and go in the cool end he can also come out and go on top okay so there's plenty of options for this boy to do and as you can see you know he is going to be obviously a lot longer than the high uh, than the tub but it's what he feels comfortable in he feels safe and secure in these size tubs and as far as I'm concerned like I said it's down to the snake okay so a lot of people ask me when should I move my snake up well you can try at the um, 400 gram range and try moving him into an 18 litre tub or into a 33 litre depending on what you have um, and see how you get on it is a trial and error guys there's no guidelines there's no when I say guidelines there's no rules there's guidelines but no rules you know it's not a definite science you know some snakes are can move hatchlings out of their hatchling tub which is 3.5 litres into a 9 litre and they feed like boas okay they don't have to go or stay in a smaller tub yet some hatchlings when I move them into a 9 litre they're not happy so I put them back into the 3.5 again guys it's whatever they feel comfortable okay so these are your standard st tubs which you'll buy and what you what you can buy from most shops um, again it's a nine litre really useful tub uh, and it's the see-through one okay now what I advise with most people if this is their setup um, I advise some people if it's in a busy area uh, put a towel over it okay the towel will darken down the tub but there is another option so and just move him out. Come on, mate. We'll get to this one in a minute. Okay, you can buy the really useful nine-liter tub in this what they call smoked. Okay, so as you can see, it's exactly the same dimensions as the clear one. It's just got a smoky background to it. Okay, now this can help as well. So you imagine it's like wearing a pair of you know sunglasses um, it does make everything darker so again this may work for some people better than the clear ones the lid goes on same principle same setup the difference is this is smoked so that may work this is an option if you feel you want to go down the smoke route uh, having them smoked that's fine not a problem okay I would probably advise that over the clear seat uh, over the clear ones but they both work and if you do have an issue you can always put a towel over the top okay so that's your basic setup once your snake is established and happy and feeding well and you know your snake and you think right okay he's ready to sort of you know go to the next one um, you can move up to something like this which is a again a this is just for demonstration guys this is an 18 litre okay um, and again all we have you can make it a bit more you can you know you can accessorize it a bit more again unprinted newspaper on the bottom a nice corner water dish again if you want to make it more you know presentable like a you know a pet display or what have you 
But again, guys, it's all about them feeling safe and secure. So you can have a nice little water dish in the corner, a nice little hide, and if you really wanted to, you can throw yourself some fake ivory in there on top, and that will work. And he'll be, he'll think he's in a bush, and he'll be happy as Larry in there. Okay. So again, uh, males obviously stay smaller than females. So. Um, an 18 litre up to 33 litre is perfect um, some females will need a 33 upwards but again guys it's personal preference make the snake feel happy and secure if it stops feeding when you've put it into a bigger enclosure okay swap it back put it back into its smaller enclosure another little trick you can do before you the nine litre so let's just put the lid on this let's go back to the nine litre say you're swapping your snake over and you're going to put the hide in don't clean the hide put the the water dish in okay for obviously fresh water and the old um, provided it's not you know such a mess that you can't you know you've got to throw it away um, put his old um, paper towel into the tub because guess what that's got his scent on him okay um, put that in there that will help him settle in to his bigger environment it's almost like you've brought him for the first time and you're introducing him into a new enclosure it's exactly the same principle okay so again it's all about them and their smell and their scent so you could use the old paper towel that you're taking or going to throw away to the 9 litre and put it into the 18 litre or the 33 litre tub. Okay, the choice is yours, guys. Okay, again, this isn't the rules, this is guidelines. This is something that I get asked quite a lot when should I upgrade my snake into a bigger enclosure? Um, th th there's no you know, there's no rules, guys. It, it is trial and error. And if your snake's not happy, you'll know it will stop feeding, um, and then just revert back to its original size enclosure. Okay, um, I hope that helps. Obviously, I'm not going to show you a setup, you know, with a heat mat and the thermostat because I've got a few more videos with that setup. Um, so go back and just have a look at them. Um, and again guys just pay attention to your snake it's about the snake not about us we have this tendency to think that we need to give animals a lot of room to uh, run freely if you like well you know you take two different types of dog you take a greyhound and a sausage dog the greyhound needs a lot of exercise okay a sausage dog or I forget what they're called now but basically a sausage dog you know they don't need you know they do struggle with the back legs and all that sort of stuff you're not going to walk it like you would a greyhound so these snakes are very similar there's different species of snakes these snakes like to feel safe and secure that's why we keep them in tubs rather than massive enclosures uh, and we have great success in breeding them feeding them and that's ultimately what you've got to look at if a snake's happy it's going to feed uh, and when it starts feeding and growing and thriving you're going to start breeding and it's going to start breeding for you um, so and again that's years of us learning from our mistakes and putting their mistakes right and that's why I say to you guys it's trial and error but a lot of us have already made their mistakes so if you see breeders okay with tubs using tubs using setups like this come on guys it's common sense you know it's obviously working um, so that's why we do it you know it's it's not that we're being horrible to the animals or anything like that it's not about space these animals live underground in burrows you know, they spend majority of their life underground in Africa waiting for rodents to come by and for them to uh, obviously ambush so that's the whole idea but if you do want your animals if it's going to be in your bedroom and it's a pet like I said and you want to make it look a bit more fancy 
you can go down the route of adding ivory uh, and some decoration but I certainly uh, would advise you guys to um, you know just try your own thing and see what works okay everyone so I hope it helps it's nothing major um, it's just a little quick video We've got more videos coming we've got uh, we've still got I think there's about seven clutches of eggs in the incubator um, and we've got probably about four more due to be laid um, so yeah I'm it's just one of them guys we're just waiting for some more eggs to come we'll do some cutting videos and I will do towards the end of the year I will do a update on the hatchlings and that's it I'd like to thank everyone for watching uh, and supporting us um, your comments mean a lot there's a few trolls out there but you know haters will hate but uh, thanks for all your support and uh, it's really uh, good to speak to you guys and I do try and reply back to everyone as much as I can okay everyone so I'm going to stop rambling and let you all get on and enjoy your snakes so take care everyone I'll speak to you guys soon